Hi, today I'm going to talk about the LS Dyna material model called Matt Ogden Rubber. This is an interesting Ogden material model that, that also can handle linear viscoelasticity. It's a useful model, but it's also particularly interesting in that it's formulated a little bit differently than many other viscoelastic material models. And I thought it would be an interesting topic to talk about that here in this video. So if you want to learn a little bit more about linear viscoelasticity, you may want to see that that's something you can look up uh, on our website. So this is our website. Just click on the question mark there and type linear viscoelasticity. And you'll see all the articles that, are, that we have written about this particular topic. We have a lot of different introductions about this. So today, though, I will talk a little bit more about specifically the theory that I have talked about in the past and how that's a little different in this Ellis Dyna Ogden uh, rubber model. So typically when you write large stream viscoelasticity, you have an instantaneous response and then you have a time integral over a relaxation type of function. And it's divided up into a hyperelastic component and a normalized uh, relaxation component. And this is called the Prony series. So the Prony series is normalized typically. And what's interesting is that most finite element programs have slightly different but somewhat similar definitions of the Prony series. Here's the abacus and the ANSYS mechanical definition of it. But the Ogden model in Alice Dyna is a little different in that it specifies these parameters uh, up to 12 Prony parameters specifically. And they're not given as Prony parameters, but as the full relaxation modulus itself. So they are not normalized. These are with dimensions of stress. So you need to give the stress values for them a beta factor, which is one over time. And this will be the relaxation time, one over the relaxation time in, in some of the other viscoelastic material models. So that's how that's done. There is no specific way to specify the volumetric relaxation in this particular linear viscoelastic model. But what's really cool here is that, that you give the complete relaxation modulus, similar to the Ogden model itself as shear moduli, you need to give them the moduli for relaxation functions here, not the normalized ones that are often done in other finite element programs. So what I want to do is I will demonstrate how we can use this and work with this in M calibration. So here's the window of M calibration. I have a, an experimental data set here. You can see that it's the uniaxial compression with unloading, and there are some relaxation periods built into to it as well. So if I plot uh, time versus stress, for example, we see that the stress relaxes like this. But I'm going to plot through engineering stress, engineering strain in this case. And then I've specified this Ogden uh, hyperelastic model with viscoelasticity. And that's a model that I implemented here as an LS Dyna uh, template material model in M calibration. We have star, mat, Ogden rubber, and then we have the Ogden parameters. We have the alpha parameters in the Ogden model. And then we have this shear modulus values and the beta values in the, this way that's shown here. And then you can just calibrate this and run this as normal. Well, there's one thing you should do first, I guess, and that is in the load case definition, you should specify what FE solver you want to use. I'm going to use LS Dyna explicit. I will use mass scaling for this because it's an explicit simulation and the long times. And I'm going to say use 10,000 10, increments in the calculations. And that's kind of it. Then you can just run this as any built-in material model. So here is the predictions uh, after running this calibration just for a little bit. You see the parameters on the left here, but it hap happens that this captures the relaxation response relatively well, as one would expect, for a quick calibration of an Ogden linear viscoelastic material model. So the point here, and the, what I wanted to emphasize, that the, you, do, you can have a linear viscoelastic material model that's not really talking about the Prony series explicitly. You can have it in terms of the stress components directly as well. That's equally fine. It, it's just an interesting way to, to formulate it, and that's uh, something that's done in this particular LS Dyna material model. Um, hope you found this interesting and useful. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.